This is not the video that I thought we'd be making today. And uh, don't do what we did. We are headed right now to the longest pedestrian bridge in the world. It is here in Portugal and it's only a little bit out of our way to go to it so we thought we can't pass up this opportunity. It's 516 meters long and approximately 175 meters off of the ground. I'm not super thrilled about heights. I have a fear of falling and it's raining out today but the bridge is open and we've already paid for our tickets. We're gonna make the best of it. It is a little bit of a complicated process to visit this bridge. There are a number of steps involved. It's kind of surprising. Well, we're gonna walk you through all of them just in case you wanna visit the longest pedestrian bridge in the world as well. Well, it's changed from rain to rain and a lot of fog. There's just not much visibility. This is a challenge with traveling at the end of October, early November. The weather is a bit of a crapshoot. It's a little bit like a box of weather chocolates. Bill is not amused by my box of weather chocolates. What's the matter with you? Well, we successfully parked our car and there were WCs right there in the parking lot. They were actually in pretty good shape. And now we are doing a 20 minute walk to the base of this bridge. It's not the kind of bridge where you'd be driving along the highway and there'll be a turnout for it. And you're like, oh look honey, Let's go drive five minutes out of our way and go to the longest pedestrian bridge in the world. No, that is not this. This is a destination, definitely a tourist attraction. And it's a bridge that pretty much doesn't go anywhere. And we're about to find out if it's worth it. In the rain, at least visibility has cleared up a little bit. Some of this 20 minute walk is through town, but most of it is not. I think this means suspended bridge, which means you think we're going the right way. This is a big hill and it would be a shame if it wasn't the right way. It might still be a bag. Basically, it's raining all the time here, it seems, and uh, yeah, I think just a ton of eucalyptus trees, which is really unusual. It bounces. More slippery than I'd like to. I bet by the time we get to the middle, we'll be swinging. Don't look down. It's easier said than done. So it sways a bit. It is slippery if it's been raining. It bounces. He said no jumping, which I don't think this is the kind of bridge that you play with your significant other and you jump on to make them all freaked out. No, don't do that here. It's not allowed. It is a long way down. I'm so glad that the fog cleared up. So we have some amazing views through the valley. There are some trails way down there. You climb down the stairs in order to get to those. That looks to be quite the journey. We're almost to the other side now and it is really jumping around properly raining. Sort of a sprinkle though, at least it's not raining as hard as it was back in the great Slova Slovenia muddy mountain trail that we did. We'll link to that if you haven't seen that yet. Oh, we made it across. How long do you think that took us? It's 516 meters. 10 minutes. So about 10 minutes across. There's a viewpoint that you can walk down to, so we're gonna go check that out, see what the view's like down there. I mentioned earlier that this is a little bit complicated to visit. The first thing you need to know is that you absolutely have to buy your ticket online. You cannot show up here and just expect to go on the bridge. Tickets are not sold here. They are only sold online. You can buy them same day, so if you have an internet connection and you arrive here without tickets, as long as they have some available, you might be able to buy some still. They do control capacity, so they can fill up on certain days and certain times. Something else you need to know if you come visit the longest pedestrian bridge in the world is that you need to decide which side you're going to enter on. One side is a 50 minute, very hard hike. And the other side, which we parked on, is a 20 minute, slightly downhill on the way down, slightly uphill on the way back. 
that's the side we would recommend. I think it's pronounced Alvarenga. We'll put the name here and we're gonna have all the information in the description below. The 20 minute walk is the one that we would recommend entering on. Uh, just for your reference, the boardwalk is on the opposite side from Alvarenga. <laughs> Status update. <laughs> well, it's pouring out. And we're trying to decide whether we need to go back over, or like what if the rain gets worse? Do they close close it? We have no idea. They didn't say anything to us, but they did say to hurry, and we don't really know why. But if we have time, there are some amazing boardwalks that are built into the mountain that you can go down and have some great views down to the river as well as back up to the bridge. We have our umbrellas, but I mean, it's boring and the clouds are moving in and um, just not sure that it's gonna be worth it today for the view. What do you think? The other concern is that there's actually nobody on the bridge right now. So we're wondering if maybe they've actually shut it down. And if that's the case, we don't know when they'll reopen it. In and which then, case, we might as well go do the boardwalk. Yeah, we're on the wrong side of things in terms of where our car is and where we need to get back to. And there is nothing over here. There are no bathrooms at either side of the bridge <laughs> when you get there. And there's no food or anything. And backpacks are not allowed. I was able to sneak on my like little mini baby backpack, but there's no food in it. So the situation update is this. We got water. There's nobody on the bridge. We have water, but there's no bathrooms. We have no food and possibly they've closed the bridge and our car is on the other side. Adventure. Speaking of rain and inclement weather, they do occasionally close the bridge due to high winds. They announced that on their Instagram page, their Facebook page, and also on their website. And if that happens while you're in the area and you've already paid for your ticket, they will refund you or allow you to reschedule on, a, on another day. So make sure you check the day before you're planning on going on the bridge to be sure that it's open. There were people who walked down here with us and they sort of all disappeared. We have no idea where they went. Oh shoot, I hope they didn't close the bridge. I'm not really sure what we'll do if they shut it. I think they shut the bridge. It, it has gotten a little windy out and the bridge has been shut for the past few days because of wind but it was supposed to be open all day today. I hope it's just a lull and everybody's getting lunch or something. So here's a really important note if you come visit the bridge. I guess there are guides that take you across if you're exactly on time. And the guide will explain to you that you have like an hour on this side of the bridge and then they close it for lunch. So the bridge has not closed due to weather, but it closed about 10 minutes ago uh, for lunch and is closed until two o'clock, which you know is not really a problem if it's not raining or if there's a cafe or if you didn't have a four and a half hour drive that you still need to make. So our options are this. There's a little covered area back behind me that has nothing, but we could sit there and at least be warm until two o'clock. We could walk seven kilometers of boardwalks down to the bottom, and at the bottom there are taxis that could take us back to the Alvarenga side where our car is. The word he used was jeep. A taxi or a jeep. Uh, or we could take the steep side, uh, which is over here, and walk about an hour. Um, it's a kilometer and a half, but I hear it's a hard hike. And down at the bottom there will also be taxis that could take us to our car on the other side. Well, I think we've made our decision. We are gonna go on the move and we are choosing to take the 50 minute hike and we can tell you whether it actually sucks the way I read that it does online. So at least we'll be able to compare both paths for you. So tell us in the comments below, what would you have done? So the guy who is on break for lunch said we go down these stairs for like 50 minutes. <laughs> And down at the bottom will be a taxi or a jeep that will take us to the top. It's still pouring rain. I mean, at least the views are nice. I have to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed that this happened. I thought we'd be able to make a YouTube video about here's how, exactly how you need to visit the bridge because we heard that it's complicated and hard. Even though I researched the heck out of it, we still got caught in one of the gotchas. So I hope if you're planning to visit the bridge and you're watching this video that you learn from us, don't make our mistake. And we've just reached a fork in the road. I don't know, I feel like we're not doing well with our choices today. We're consulting to Google. So it's down, not up. But you would have to go up that hill if you were heading to parking. 
and we're very nearly at the road. Boy, if there's not a taxi down there, I'm gonna be pissed. At least it's pretty. All I can think about right now is how if there's no taxi at the bottom of these stairs, we have to go all the way back up them. That's all I can think about. Oh, there better be a taxi at the bottom. Yep. I don't think I'm seeing a taxi down there. And my legs are trembling from going down these stairs. No Jeeps, no taxis. Just an empty parking lot. And the parking lot contains two people who are starving. Not starving, it's like a bit dramatic, but hungry. I had to figure out how to call a taxi in Portugal. Well, we were walking over to the stairs right behind me when <laughs> a taxi quite literally drove by. It is full with other people right now, but the gentleman who was in the passenger seat translated and the taxi driver is coming back for us in 15 minutes. So that was amazingly nice of the passenger to help us out. So he's gonna come back for us in about 15 minutes. We were almost having to go all the way back up those stairs about an hour. Great success! I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Great success. <laughs> we are back at the car. Uh, taxi driver was really nice. Didn't speak a lick of English, but nope. kept telling us uh, excitedly about the things we were passing, which was kind of cute. So we missed out on coming back across the bridge, which is kind of a bummer because when you pay for it, you pay to go across in both directions. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say after having done both sides, make sure that you park on the Alvarenga side. It is hands down the easier path to take. And there's more services this side too. There's a bathroom, there's, you know, gas stations and bakeries and things. Yeah, the other one really was in the middle of nowhere. The bridge closes from noon till two, so make sure you know the hours. And this is not the video that I thought we'd be making today. Uh, but all's well that ends well. Learn from our mistakes and uh, don't do what we did. Next, we are off to southern Portugal, where hopefully we are driving out of the rain and into some sunny weather. We'll catch you next week. Com chuva. Bless you. Ah, you. Turned inside out. Great. That's for the blue.